Thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to take a look at the barcode generator that's included in FileMaker 19. Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul Fisher. So there's nothing new about using barcodes in FileMaker solutions. We've been doing it for a very long time. The exciting news is that every developer using FileMaker 19 now has access to 18 different barcodes with a simple drag and drop installation. This add-on functions more like a widget, more like a button that you drop on a layout. And you need to drag a new one onto each layout because it's context sensitive. We enter a value into a text field and then we click a button and it will generate a image file that is entirely independent of this data. And that makes it autonomous. It can be exported, it can be used in ways that are separate from the data structure itself, and this gives it immense versatility. Now, if using barcodes is old hat to you, feel free to open the descriptions and jump ahead. But if you're new to barcodes, let's take a minute to talk about what they are and where they came from. The first barcode ever scanned in a commercial use case was at Marsh's Grocery Store in Troy, Ohio. It was a UPC symbol, and it was for a 10-pack of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The rapid adoption of the UPC symbol in grocery stores had the effect of making UPC synonymous with barcode, but it's simply one of many. There are other barcodes that exist for other purposes, other industries, and are capable of holding a lot more information. So what exactly is a barcode? Well, interestingly enough, the idea for barcodes comes from Morse code. The idea is you stretch out the dot and then squish it all together. And a sequence creates a number or character. So when you go into a grocery store, every single product has a barcode. And when you slide it across the scanner and it makes that beep, what that's doing is inputting into that system that number as if it were typing it into a keyboard. This becomes the lookup ID and that links it to the records in a database where it gets the description of the item and the price. And that's what ends up on your receipt. It is clear to see how this is a huge time saver and increases accuracy dramatically. So barcodes have been adopted across all manner of industries. And the two really big ones that come to mind are inventory management and logistics. If you've received a package from FedEx or UPS and it has a large barcode on it, that barcode was scanned at every point along that package's route. And that's how they're able to know where any package is at any given time in a global network. And that's also how you get those updates that a package has been dropped off on your front porch. Since 2013, with FileMaker Go, we've been able to use the insert from device script step to scan a barcode. But where we've always had some challenges is generating the barcode. Now, you could get a font, and they could go from being expensive to inexpensive, um, or there were custom functions that would take pipes from standard fonts and condense them in such a way that they looked like a barcode. And there were others who found ways to use the web viewer to generate an image of a barcode. And that is essentially what this add-on is. It is a web viewer that's using JavaScript to generate an image and then putting that image into a container field. I'm going to show you how to install the barcode generator and how to configure it. This feature came with the FileMaker 19.1.2 update. I'm going to take this file into layout mode and then I'm going to click on the show hide button for the objects pane. I make sure that add-ons is selected and I'll see a plus button at the bottom. And this allows me to select an add-on. And we'll click on the barcode generator. On the right here I get a visual of what it will look like and I get a description of what tables and layouts and scripts will be added to my file. I click choose. Now at this point this add-on is installed in my system. If I go in and I look at my schema I can see that it added a table. We can drag this onto our layout and right now this has created an instance of this barcode. I can do this a second time and it will make a separate instance so these will work independently of each other. 
The first thing you're going to notice when you bring this in is it doesn't just work right after you drag and drop it. Now if we click the button, we get a dialog that says the barcode generator needs to be configured to work in this context. You'll notice that when I click on this, I have no fields to select from, nor do I have a place to choose the layout from which I can select fields, which is different from the other add-ons. And the reason for that is the barcode generator is meant to work right alongside your data. It should be on the layout with the record itself. Now for the purposes of seeing this as a sample, we could go into our layout, go into layout setup, and we could set this to look at our barcode generator. We need to add a field for our example code for our example container. We can click on our configurator and look at that, they're already set up. Now it comes in with the existing data and it has already generated a barcode. Select this and hit delete, push the button and it will generate a new image. So this table that we're on is our barcode generator table and it really only ever should have one record. It's storing the HTML, it's storing the configuration. We just need to leave this alone. So we can take this example code and this example container and we can copy them. We can go into our own table and we'll just paste them in here. We go into layout mode and we can let our barcode demo be actually referencing our barcode demo table. And then let's set these fields up to reference their appropriate fields. Now we need to go into our configurator. And now that our layout is not referencing the barcode generator table, it's not auto populating these. So we need to select our example code and our image field. And then we hit save. And now if we type a value in here and we click the barcode button, it will generate a barcode. But what kind of barcode is this, you might ask? So let's go configure our different barcodes. So we click on the configurator and we click on settings. We click on the barcode format. And it's here that we have an option to choose from 18 different barcodes. The most common is code 39. So let's work with that. We can also change the color of the lines in the barcode. We can use a hexadecimal number or we can simply type in the word of the color. We also have the object to hide the display of the numbers. So now if we generate a new number by clicking, we have only the barcode. If we go back in and we turn our barcode back on. I actually do recommend leaving this black unless you have a very specific reason for changing the color. So now it's both human readable and machine readable. Because a web viewer cannot have a transparent background. We have the option to change the background color. Now this is set up to match the default color, but let's say I want to make it black. Now, because this can be triggered by a script, I may not want this button here at all, but I do have to have the web viewer on the layout somewhere because that's the nature of how this works. So there is an option here to hide it. With our background color the same and the button hidden, it, it's not even noticeable and there's no action that can happen. And all we have left is this configurator button. A few things to know. The configurator button is only visible to users with full access and these two come in group together. Now we can arrange and ungroup and we could move this configurator wherever we wanted. And in fact, we don't even need this on our layout because we could call this script and as long as we provide it with this script parameter, it doesn't matter where we call it from. We could make our own button or we could call this from like an administrative dashboard. Come over here and we take a look at what this hide object properties are. This is only going to show to a user with full access who is on a Mac or a Windows desktop computer. Let's assume we want to show this information in a list view. We also want to generate the barcodes in a list view. But we could set it up like this and we click the button and we generate the record. Well, it also works fine if it's up here in the header. And then whatever record is selected is where it will be operated. Given that information, we can add a script trigger. Let's look at our scripts. Private should be left alone. That's for the development of the add-on. And public is where you're going to find the things that you're going to call. 
and we need this script, barcode trigger generate as configured. And it's saying down here that it's gonna want the add-on UUID as the script parameter. Let's close out of here. We're gonna click on our example code, set the script trigger, and we're gonna do it like it said on object exit. And we're gonna click okay. We haven't yet added our script parameter, so a couple different ways we can get it. One is, and probably the easiest, is to simply click on our web viewer and then just highlight this value and copy and go back into our script trigger and we're going to select. So it just was asking for this value. It didn't need it to be wrapped in any kind of JSON object. We'll go back into browse mode and now when I tab out of this field, it will generate a new barcode. And now I no longer need this button, so let's go back into the configurator and let's hide our button. But there is one caveat. This is a variable with barcode, so it will expand as I just keep adding more and more characters, but that's not how all barcodes work. And if we do go into the configurator and we set this to one of those barcodes, let's set this to, let's use the UPC. It has a specific number that it's expecting, and if I try to leave this, I'm going to get an error. So let's take a look at scanning barcodes in FileMaker Go, FileMaker's mobile app. I have created a global field, and when I scan the barcode, it will put it in there, and then it will simply do a find on the records in this table, and then show me what it finds. And this button, so it's gonna insert from device. Now, if we do look at what my options were, I have a lot of different barcodes that it can recognize. And currently I only have two records in here, one for cat treats and one for bags. So let's go to our Apple iPad and I'm gonna click the button. What's gonna happen here is it's gonna turn on the camera. And when I reveal the barcode, it's gonna zoom in on it, scan it, insert it into the field, and then continue the script. And it did a find and it found our garbage bags. Well, that's the barcode generator add-on in a nutshell. Remember that each barcode in that list has its own specific criteria. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Check the internet for custom functions or techniques for catching errors. And remember that liking a video is a great way to let us know we're producing the content that you find valuable. You can subscribe and click for notifications to find out when the next video comes out. And also check the description to see if we produce a Productive Computing University course on this subject matter. Thanks for joining.